There's a great big buck. He is about 30, 40 yards right in front of us in that sorghum field, standing and looking right at us. Now from the King of Bucks television, it's Tales of the King, amazing stories from hunters just like you. Mike Okre is a serious hunter. If you have any doubts, take a short walk through his rural Wisconsin home. I've, I've had the opportunity to hunt a lot of places, uh, yeah, all over Europe, in, in, uh, up, uh, as far north as the Arctic Circle for muskox and down as far south as uh, Argentina for birds and, and for red stag and uh, Australia for the kangaroos and for the water buffaloes and uh, made a few trips, four or five trips over to Africa. Uh, so yeah, I've just, it, it's been a great time, great adventure for me uh, to be able to hunt so much. Though he has traveled worldwide, Okre still holds a deep respect for one of his first passions, hunting trophy whitetail. Because uh, the whitetail is so accessible uh, for so many hunters here in North America, uh, there's so many of them and you know, they don't grow on trees, the big ones don't grow on trees anymore uh, because so many people know where they are. Uh, so yeah, I think it's probably one of the hardest animals, if not the hardest animal, uh, to get in North America, the real trophy whitetail. The open country of eastern Colorado was not the place you'd expect to find big whitetails. This was mule deer country. The real trophy whitetails were a Kansas commodity located far to the east. But in the early 90s, that began to change. There were a lot of whitetails that were coming up uh, through the creeks and, and the rivers out of Kansas and migrating. And, kind of taken over where the big mule deers were and, and, and they were coming up there mainly because of the sorghum fields. But I had a good friend uh, who also was a guide, Greg Pink, uh, out of Colorado, and he felt that we'd have a real good chance in the leases that he had. We were hunting uh, just about, uh, about 20 miles or so uh, west of a little town called Lamar in the uh, southeast part of Colorado, which, you know, at that time back in the 90s was not really known for big whitetails, but uh, the food was there and there wasn't a lot of hunting pressure. It's a, kind of been in a very remote part of the state. So, you know, these whitetails had a chance to, to become more mature, to get the four, five, six-year-old whitetails uh, that, you know, guys are looking for. And Greg had a plan for the next day. He said, you know, Mike, he said, I think a lot of those bucks, there's no place else for them to go. They're laying down in that sorghum field, and then uh, they just lay in there. They know they're safe. Nobody can see them from the roads or any place. He said, I think that we'll go early in the morning and I'm going to make a little drive for you. He says, I'll put you on one end of this 200 acre sorghum field and I'll get down on the other end and I'll start zigzagging and uh, maybe we can drive one out. There were trails through those sorghum fields going to these little wooded areas. What was waiting in the sorghum would exceed their wildest expectations. But the drive didn't go as originally planned. So I'm standing there and getting ready and uh, about a half hour goes by and I see him standing there and all of a sudden he starts waving his hand and of course uh, I saw him and I said to myself, yeah, I see it, go ahead. And, and then pretty quick he waves it a little bit more violently. And I, yeah, I see it, go ahead, start walking. Well then he takes his hat off and he starts waving it frantically back and forth like I should come, come towards him. I thought, geez, now I gotta come towards him. I thought, I thought he was coming towards me. I thought, did we get this goofed up? I'm supposed to drive towards him? And I get there, he says, Mike, he says, there's a great big buck. He says about 30, 40 yards right in front of us in that sorghum field, standing and looking right at us. And I thought he was watching it. He said, he watched you the whole time you came over here. But I says, well, what do you think he'll score, Greg? He said, I have no idea. He's gonna be a big one. Greg says, now, just trust me. He said, this is a big buck. He said, just stand up and shoot him. He's right out in front of you. So I put the crosshairs where I could see just a patch of brown hair to the right of the head. And I pull the trigger and as I'm putting the gun down and putting another shell in, Greg says, you shot right over the top of him. He says about six inches low. And I pull the trigger and the brown spot just dropped. And uh, Greg starts yelling, jumping around. He said, you got him, you got him. And, and when I was holding the gun up in the air and taking the shell out, Greg was there already at the deer. And he's, holy frights. And I says, well, what, what's it like? Uh, Greg turned to me and he said, Mike, I think you just shot the new state record for Colorado non-typical. He says, I've seen a lot of bucks. He said, there's nothing bigger than this. 
Okre's friend Greg Pink was right. There was nothing bigger from the state of Colorado. Wildly non-typical with enormous drop tines, the rack had 36 scorable points, earning it a Boone and Crockett score of 268 and 18. It was a huge animal with a live weight of over 318 pounds. Oak Ray mounted the body with a replica of the rack. It holds a special place among the trophies of his other adventures. And the original rack, the Colorado State Record, is part of the King of Bucks collection. I think that's really special uh, to be able to share it with a lot of people that they know that, that that's the buck and um, you know how else can a lot of people see it other than in that traveling situation that they have with the bucks and, and over at Springfield itself. So I'm hoping someday I'm going to go down there and, and one of my hunts maybe I'll go down to Missouri for a turkey hunt and stop in and take a look at it. It's one thing if you shoot something A that makes a record book, that's exciting enough. But when it gets to be a state record, uh, especially in Colorado where uh, you know, was not known uh, for whitetails. That becomes even more special uh, because it wasn't meant to be there. Michael's Colorado Monster has a final score of 258 and 28 and ranks as Colorado's number one non-typical whitetail, an incredible deer worthy of the King of Bucks collection.